What's up, people? This is episode 35 of Sports Debate Tuesday. This episode is brought to you by NY Varsity Sports. That's me. That's me. The NYV. Along with Rob McLean, I'm Jason DeBiss, and the episode starts right now. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey, 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 <laughs> let's go, Buffalo, <laughs> let's go, Buffalo, yo, we got a lot to talk about, okay, I, I mean, you know I gotta shout out my team first, but, cause my dude, Josh Allen, threw for 470, 17 yards, four touchdowns with a one, I believe a 153 passer rating, him and Russell Wilson. Those are my, those are my, my front runners for MVP, man. So, hey, but okay, people, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get right right now. This is episode 35. This is Sports Debate Tuesday. I'm Jason DeBiss and that is my man, Rob, keeping McLean. McLean, how you doing today, bro? Doing great, man. Doing great. All right, cool. We're going to get rolling. Got a lot to talk about. Got our, our NFL pick six. It's going to be exciting. It was, it was pretty fun last week. It's going to be even more exciting this week. Anthony Davis, buzzer beater, put the Lakers up 2-0. Uh, we got a little UFC over the weekend, you know, uh, a must talk about because there's nothing like two people that hate each other that want to punch each other in the face and maybe convey the disappointment that happened with that, I think. Well, um, that's as much of a tease as I'm going to give. Um, mm-hmm. But let's go back to the NFL, Rob. Um, uh, a lot of surprise teams. A lot of teams finish 0-2. Uh, a lot of teams finish 2-0. and um, Tampa Bay rebounded to finish 1-1. and Patriots are 1-1 and right now. Lost to Seattle last night. Great, 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 su- I mean, Sunday night game. Great Sunday night game. Don't you think so? I thought all the games were really exciting, honestly. Yeah, I thought man. it was the whole season so far has been really good. Defending Super Bowl <laughs> champs, right? Mm-hmm. Um, overtime, overtime game with... Sorry, my mic is bugging. Um, overtime Kansas game with City. Um, Kansas, yeah, with um, the Chargers. Chargers, yeah, and uh, and then you had an overtime game with uh, the the Bengals. Yeah, I believe it was. Yeah, so um, so crazy. A lot of teams that are two and zero. Rob, my first question is, which two and zero team was the biggest surprise to you? Um. Hmm. The biggest surprise. I mean. I don't know. Um, I guess I'd say all of them, honestly. I, I didn't think. I think anybody would would be, you know, this good at this point. But um, I mean, I, you know, the Bills are right up with them. You know, I think they're right up, right up there. Um, not to say they're a surprise, but just you know how consistent they can be. Um, yeah, I'm not. Uh, you know. Yeah, man. What do What do you think? I like. Um, well. The first thing I think of, because I'm such a big fan of Mike Tomlin, was the Steelers. You know, because there's something to be said about this guy that had like no talent last year, was still eight and eight. But then again, if you, if Belichick's Belichick's one and he's one a, you're not that's I'm not that surprised he's two and zero. Oh. Rob, my big surprise was the Chicago Bears. The Chicago Bears right now are miraculously two and zero. Oh. They um they played the Lions in a, a game they probably should have lost. I mean, Trubisky was playing really really bad, and everybody was thinking, you know, when are we gonna say allow me to introduce myself? My name is Foles, <laughs> right? Ready to give him the chain, and all of a sudden Trubisky started playing well. Um, Stafford yeah. threw an ill-advised interception with you know a, a couple a couple of minutes left on the clock, and even then. He threw a, a pass into the end zone that got dropped, you know. So a little bit of Lions luck gave him that first game, and then Chicago's got to be the luckiest team on the face of the earth. Saquon Barkley gets injured in the beginning of the game. By the way, um, Giants are in big trouble, man. Giants are in big trouble. Saquon Barkley got left the game with 28 yards rushing and was still the leader <laughs> in rushing on their team. So, so um, yeah, Montgomery. Uh, sting, you know, stingy Giants defense played really well, and 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 that surprised me more than anything because I didn't think their defense, um, you know, not a lot of big names, but they've always a big big blue has always found a way to to be proud, you know. Uh, with that being said, Montgomery got some stingy yards, 127 total purpose yards. Um, I think 80 on the ground and 47 on um, 47 by air, 
And yeah, Chicago is my biggest my biggest surprise on as far as oh, um, two. I like the way Trubisky was playing though. I mean, I thought I thought he threw the ball better than I've ever seen him throw the ball. <clears throat> so yep. yeah, no doubt. Cool. Um, on another note, I think one of my disappointing teams, like the zero and two team, was um, was Atlanta Falcons. You know, I mean, no one really expects him to beat Seattle. I mean, that's not a that's not an easy game to win, especially against yeah, the best quarterback game, nobody though. talks about, Russell Wilson. Um, and then you have um, this collapse, this epic collapse against the Dallas Cowboys, which is going to be our our it's segue to our next subject matter. I mean, I love talking about my Bills. Um, you know, they held on to win Fitzpatrick and, you know, if you let him Fitzpatrick can ruin your day, <laughs> you know, if you, if you just play keep away ball, he, he, the guy, it inspires him to just throw and, and next thing you know, he's beating the Patriots, but, um, said way to our next subject, Dallas Cowboys, uh, came back from 39, 24, actually travels as much as 29, 10, but 39, 24 with five minutes left, uh, 99 point nine percent chance of the Falcons winning at 39 30 with two with two minutes and 57 seconds left in the game um I guess my question is did this game say more about the Cowboys or did it say more about the Falcons um <clears throat> for me it said more about the Cowboys um and not in a good way I think it was Pretty crazy how they were down. They had four turnovers in the first quarter, or three turnovers in the first quarter. Uh, they were down 21, 17, nothing in the first quarter. They were down, you know, it's just like, it's crazy they put up 40 points in three quarters. But the fact to me is like, they can't get that rolling from the beginning. Because even if they won that game 40 39, the Falcons are coming back. We'd be like, okay, their defense was at fault. But a win like this is like, I hope they do good things going forward because, for me, you have all this talent in the world. You just got a great wide receiver. You can, you should be able to protect the quarterback. You have a, a fantastic running back, and you can't score at all. You know, you turn the ball over, you shoot yourself in the foot, and then you have a great defense who didn't show up until the second half of the game. It's just a lot of bad things going on for Dallas. And for me, I thought it was a one of the best games I've seen from, from the Atlanta Falcons, top to bottom. They don't have the talent to compete against Dallas. So, of course, Dallas can come back at will, which they did, and score whenever they want um, when they decide to show up. So, for me, it was more telling how, you know, up and down Dallas will be yet again this year. Rob, I got a um... – Good, we got ourselves official debate because I think it was more of an epic collapse on the on the Falcons. Of course, uh, the Dallas Cowboys ha- have to, in order to come back, you actually have to score, right? There's two things that have to happen: the opportunity has to be there, um, and the Falcons gave that to them. And you still have to get into the red zone and still get into the end zone for 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 touchdowns. I thought Amari Cooper played played really really good ball, particularly in the second half. Dak Prescott, um, I believe. Um, I think I got some numbers in front of me. Dak Prescott, well, he threw for 400-plus yards, but he's also the first quarterback. And this is a weird stat, very interesting stat for both of us to scratch our heads with. He's the first quarterback to throw for more than 300 yards and rush for three touchdowns in a game. That's the first time that's happened since in the Super Bowl era. And, me, I mean, you and I, with like all of these mobile quarterbacks with strong arms, how the hell did, did this only happen this year, right? <laughs> I mean, between you and me, you look at Mahomes, you look at Lamar Jackson, you look at Josh Allen, that's probably going to happen twice this year. <laughs> <laughs> right, but I gotta That's go true. Falcons because this isn't the first time we saw this epic collapse. I'll bring your attention to the Super Bowl against the New England New England Patriots before Brady went Brady. Um, some stupid errors at the end, and this highlighting this one: thirty nine thirty, they get a touchdown, but they're still leading by two. Onside kick, you you got to get on that ball. It, I mean, I'll, I'll probably show highlights because this is this is a pre recording. Uh, for Sports Debate Tuesday. But these guys doing like basically five guys, you got five Atlanta Falcons doing this campfire waiting for the ball to cross. I don't know what the hell they were thinking. I mean, were they thinking a kickoff, yeah. roll out of bounds and start at your own 40? No, you lay on it. Give me give me bodies. Give me dark jersey bodies. Epic poli- collapse on the part of the Atlanta Falcons. <clears throat> 
Of course, for Cowboys fans, they're gonna say it's 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 the greatest comeback in their them. history, right? Yeah, um, of course. But and if you ask them that. what this means for Dallas, you know what they're saying. This means we're going to the Super Bowl, right? So now, mm-hmm. so now we got to listen to that for the rest of the week because um, as I don't have a, I've never had a problem with the Cowboys as much as I've had a problem with their their nauseating. Um, throw fan up in base. my mouth, annoying fan base, right? One win, yeah. we're going to the Super Bowl. Beat beat the Washington football team. We're going to the Super Bowl. Beat beat Miami. You know the the Dolphins with nobody. Oh, this is this is all oh, this team's got resolve. All oh, this team is made of sterner stuff. Oh God, give me a break. So I'm here. Yeah, but trying to be objective because um, Dak Prescott, I'm a little biased. I really like the guy. I thought you know he. You know, it's very, very hard to replace Romo. And, you, I mean, the only, if you remember when he came in, that was the only way he was going to keep that job. Finishing 13 and 3, right? There was no other way. If he was 10 and 6, if he was 9 and 7, Romo's going back in. Good, you know, pat on the butt. Good job, Dak, you're sitting down. So I have a personal bias that I root for that guy because he he, he he's the epitome of hard work. And he's also a mulatto like you and me, so... You know, he also said his his mixed up bringing, um, made he he believes made him a better leader because he said he can relate to um, you know, white white culture and black culture at the same time, and and God bless him. We can we can relate to what he's talking about because I think once we survive our childhood, Rob, <laughs> and all the mean stuff, it really does it really does serve us, us um have it have its advantages. So, um, man, just. Ooh, ooh, we got to eat this. But you're saying Cowboys, uh, more Cowboys come back. I'm saying more uh, Falcons collapse on that. And I think... Um, no, yeah, I'm saying it's more Cowboys' fault, though. Yeah. Ain't nobody good in that game. Mm. That was just... Yeah, I mean, mm. dude, we all lose. Build it up and break it down. We all losers on that one. <laughs> all right, so let's let's um let's get right to it because this as you know this episode can go really quick because it's if it's football <laughs> which time flies where we're having fun ladies and gentlemen this is our nfl pick six i want to bring your attention to our our winner last week uh the winner is coach duncan avery i want to put his picture up and let's see if i can sorry let's oops sorry let's see if i could do this duncan avery right there oops a perfect six and zero. Oh. Look who we picked. Perfect six and zero. Oh. Big up to Duncan Avery. Picked the Cowboys, Bears, Bucks, Ravens, Hawks, and Browns. Um, we, Rob, you were five and one. I believe you picked the New York Giants, which is a pretty good record. I'm, I'm also six and zero. Oh. I picked everyone. Uh, Duncan picked, and. Um, Right now, the guest against the host. The guests are a perfect twelve and zero, <laughs> and you and I we're nine and three and eight and four. So we got some catching up to do. Big up to our guy Theo Brunner. Theo Brunner is going to be our guest this week. Um, let me plug his his info up. All right, so first game, pick six, Rob. We got Cincinnati Bengals visiting the Philadelphia Eagles. Who do you got, buddy? Uh, honestly, I'm going to go with Cincy again. I really think they're going to, you know, break through. Um, you know, there's not a fan base in Philly, so I'm going to go with uh, the Cincinnati Bengals. I thought this guy, Joe Burrow, has been playing really, really good football in both of the losses. I mean, we knew he's going to come into the league, and we knew he had like this, not necessarily NFL IQ, but like football maturity, where it didn't look like things shook him, but this is a must win for Cincy because you don't I know you want your first year quarterback to take his lumps, but for a guy that's not used to losing, you know, and you lose too much to a point where where it feels normal, that might mess with his psyche too. Um Ooh, this is tough. Wentz needs a win too. Wentz has turned into Wentz the last two weeks. I gotta I think I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Eagles on this one. I'm gonna go Eagles on this one. And um my boy Theo Brunner, he's our guest this week. He's gonna go. Jeez. He's gonna go. Cincinnati Bengals. Cool yeah, man. man. All right. Um, next game, L.A. Rams visit the Buffalo Bills. I'll go first on this one. I love the L.A. Rams, and I like the way that they found their running game to improve, uh, uh, regardless of not having Todd Gurley there. Because Todd Gurley, regardless of his injuries, is a big loss. Because he's a, he's a slasher, and he could cut, and he, and he can run on you know on, and he you know he could run off the eye like nobody's business. But 
Buffalo's defense has gotten com- really, really good upgrades. I mean, Josh Norman, uh, it's, it's, everyone's talking about Diggs, you know, as an addition, everyone's talking about Josh Allen, this MVP type season, too early to tell, of course, and also too early to tell how good they're going to be, but this is their first big test, and I think they pass it, I go Buffalo. Yeah, I really do want to go with the Chargers on this one because I really like their... Um, no, Rams, Rams. Oh, it's Rams, LA yeah. Rams. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. Even still, I, I want to go with the Rams just because the uh, because it's very very good front front four there, um, and I think that's going to be the the problem with the <clears throat> with the Bills is uh, if they're able to take that pass rush. But yeah, I had to go with the Bills on this one. I, I really liked what uh, what I saw from their from their offense, and uh, I still want to see what, what's going to happen on their front four with their defense. So. Yeah. You know, hopefully, good things to come. So definitely, Buffalo on this one. Yeah, because that secondary looks really good. I mean, don't let mm-hmm. don't let Fitzpatrick fool you. He got it. He got some low calorie yards. You know, in suit to a comeback, but just the same. Your boy Theo Brunner is going to go with the Rams on this one. And let's go to our third pick. Our third pick on the pick six is Chicago Bears visiting the Atlanta Falcons. Oh, tough one. Um. I want to, oh yeah, I mean, I, you know, the way Atlanta just dropped their game last week, I can only expect them to come out a little flat, and uh, yeah, so <clears throat> I don't think I'll be able to pick them. <laughs> Who you got? So, uh, I forget who's the first team. <laughs> not, not the Falcons, right? Where you at, man? Chicago Bears, Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, that's all I'm like. Yeah, I gotta go with the Bears, especially after last week. I should have picked them with the with yeah. the Giants, but yeah, I'll go Bears. One, two, tell me who are you? The Bears. Three, four, tell me who's going to score? The Bears. I'm having a Brady Bunch moment here, okay? I love me some Trubisky, and I even love their backup quarterback. Nick, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Foles. But this week, luck runs out for the Bears. I got to go Falcons. Falcons fix what they started, and I think Theo co-signs with me on this one. He's going Falcons as well. All right, number uh, pick six, game number four. We talked about them already, and here they go again. Dallas Cowboys visit the Seattle Seahawks. Who do you got, Rob? Should I go first? Yeah. I mean, this is an easy one for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the Seahawks, and i love to see what uh, Jamal Adams is going to do in that secondary again because uh, he's one of my favorite players right now. So, yeah, Russell Wilson going to tear up that tear up that secondary with DK Metcalf, and uh, it's going to be nice to see. So, Seattle. Yeah. For me, I'm going to go Seattle Seahawks because – um, I really like the acquisition they picked up from the Jets last minute and Jalen's, I think it's Jalen Smith, right? Or Jalen, uh, J- uh, sorry, uh, J- uh, Adams. Oh, Jamal, Jamal Adams. Adams. Yeah. Jamal Adams. The real question is, uh, are, are they going to go man with him and, and the rookie, you know, um, from Dallas? Or are they going to put him with Amari? Are they going to double up Amari and and have um, Adams go one-on-one with the the I forgot this. C.D. Lamb. Yeah. C.D. Lamb. I, I mean, <clears throat> he's going to play the middle pretty tough, you know. Yeah. I think he works out perfectly like a like that bit like that uh, Legion of Boom before. So. Yeah, man. I think the Legion of Boom is coming back, man. They get they get one yeah. more guy. It's officially back. Russell Wilson, of course, having another uh, MVP type year. You know, throwing 300 plus yards. His his completion percentage is off the page. I think last week he was 31 for 35, and this week um not not as good, but I mean similar similar um competitive numbers. And Theo goes Seahawks. Theo Brunner says Seahawks. All right, um, game number five of the pick six. We have the Green Bay Packers visiting the New Orleans Saints. I'll go first on this one. Oh, when the Saints come marching in, oh, when the Saints come marching in, this week I'm going to pick their number, because <laughs> I'm tired of picking against them. I'm picking the Saints on this one. I mean, very tough team at home, and I know um, there's something about not having to travel, and I'm not, I'm not talking about crowd. I'm just talking about familiar environment. I'm talking about Drew Brees, who, like Wilson, doesn't get talked about enough. I think they are on a mission to get back into their NFC Championship situation with, that they've blown a couple of times. And Sean Payton, one of the, one of the more prepared coaches in the NFL, um, is probably going to stack 
eight in the box against Jones and and corner blitz Rodgers. See, make Rodgers get rid of the ball early because if Rodgers gets to hold that ball, he's a bad dude. You know, even when he doesn't hold the ball, he's got like these 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 crossing patterns and these slants where if he has that rhythm, <clears throat> yeah. But the Saints like to hit people, and Rodgers don't like to get hit. I'm going New Orleans. <clears throat> yeah, I'm also going New Orleans. Uh, I just think. You know, you're not going to win every game this season, and this is going to be one of those games. It's going to be a great game. It's going to be tight. But, uh, you know, New Orleans already felt loss. You know, they, they, they kind of know what it's like. And, and I think uh, the Green Bay Packers are just kind of going to go on the road. They're going to play a great game, but it's just going to be something where they just uh, can't really come up with it. <clears throat> so I have to go with the Saints on this one. Yeah, um, Theo says Saints too. So that's a trifecta there. Uh, last game, we got a uh, Monday night game, actually. And I'm trying to steer away from it because we pre-record, but this is too irresistible to pass up. This is the Kansas City Chiefs, the defending Super Bowl champions, visiting the Baltimore, the last year's 14-2 and Baltimore Ravens. You got Lamar Jackson. You got Patrick Mahomes. You got two really, really good coaches, too, and Andy Reid and Harbaugh, man. I'm, uh, yeah. We're not practicing that day. <laughs> whatever kind of whatever kind of girl plans girls got, they need to go do it with other girls. Okay, I'm, I'm sounding sexist for saying this because my girl watches football too. So, what do you got? Yeah, it's a tough one. Um, it's regular season. Uh, I really think that as a team, you know, I look at it as a team, a team, not not as uh, you know Lamar Jackson against Patrick Mahomes, but. Uh, for me, early season, you know, something that's e- very simple to put on the field and simple to make happen. Uh, I think that the Baltimore Ravens are going to be able to come up and, and you know, run the, the type of game plan they've been running for what works in a season type of mode, not necessarily playoffs. But, um, yeah, I really think that Lamar's going to come out and, and, you know, do his thing and get a ton of yards. Uh Kansas City didn't play the best last week, and I really think that that kind of translate into this week. So, yeah, I got to go with the Ravens, and this, and it's because Patrick Mahomes, as talented as he as he is, he can get away with some stuff. He can play good for a half and still win some of these games. He can come back at the end and still win these games. The Baltimore Ravens, particularly at Baltimore, is not the team that you want to play a half and expect to win. You have to play an entire game against them to win, and even then. With their defense, I don't, I don't, I mean, even playing a whole game with high, with a heightened level of efficiency might not be enough. So, um, I really like the Ravens controlling time of possession. I really like what they're doing on their Pistons. I mean, Colin Kaepernick is like <laughs> looking so so good in so many ways because he was one of the first quarterbacks I've seen do that really well. We've seen mobile quarterbacks, but like implementing it in your offense is just. Um, really, really good. Mahomes is one of the best throwers in the game. We compare him to Aaron Rodgers. But I got to go Ravens because I think if the Chargers presented problems for Mahomes defensive scheme-wise, um, he's probably not going to have the best time in his, in his life against the Baltimore Ravens. So, And Theo co-signs with us, trifecta. Theo picks the Ravens. That is our pick six. And right now, again, me and Rob, we got some work to do. We got some catching up to do. We ain't trying to get housed by our guests. This is what happens when we invite people, right? (laughs) They mess around, become undefeated. You know, I got one in the house too, Rob. Jeez. Let's go to the NBA. Um, This is, I don't think we're going to spend a whole lot of time on this, um, but it has to, it has to be given its attention due to last night. Um, Anthony Davis, buzzer beater. Three-pointer trailing by uh, one. No time on the clock. Yells Kobe. Big tribute shot. Got a lot of emotion. Um, I really loved watching the the video monitors they have because you saw p- the stress on people's face. You know, in the one-point situation, one guy was kind of like this or whatever. So, um, but there has to be a question, right? So the question is, did this buzzer beater, which put him up 2-0, did it crush any chance the Nuggets had of winning? Um, of winning the series, probably, but um, <clears throat> I don't. I still don't think it's going to be an easy series. I still think. I mean, look at how competitive this game was. The first game was competitive for three quarters. Um, I just don't think they have the overall talent to win four games. So I think it'd probably still go, 
you know, they still probably squeak one game out, maybe possibly two. But, um, yeah, I, I just think, as you see in the last two games, very competitive, very tough games. But at the end, it's still, you know, the Lakers are in control. Even if they have, you know, they're down a little bit, they've, they're not gassed. They're not, they haven't been trying to come back the whole game. They're just kind of right there with the team, you know. So, uh, yeah, I, I just have to say that I think it does kill, you know, the series will probably be decided um, not by the shot, but by how the energy is kind of, you know, a little bit of wind out of their sails the next uh, game or so. But um, I still think they'll be able to take a game. Yeah, for me, I thought if they were going to take a game, this was the game they were going to take. I said in the beginning, I thought the, I picked the Lakers to win 4-1. And I also had a huge emphasis on talking about how um, resilient and how much heart and fight the Nuggets have. Uh, and I said they won't get swept. They're too good for that. But this is the kind of game that, I, I mean, do you recover in a game or do you recover in two games? They're not gonna, they don't recover in two games. It's done. That's 4-0. So that's the question. And my answer is I don't think they will. I think. I originally had the Lakers 4-1, four, four, and now I think the Lakers win 4-0. You know, um, would love the Nuggets to make a liar out of me. Uh, I love watching them play. I love watching them come back from these three ones. They did it against the Jazz. They did it against the Clippers. Um, and they're the comeback kids. They trailed as much as 16 points in the third quarter in this game, you know, uh, and found ways to come back and, in fact, take the lead. So, um, But clearly they showed – they, they're not happy to be there. You know, last time I thought they weren't happy to be there with the Clippers, but I was like, they're for sure happy to be there against the Lakers and and looked more than willing to go to the guillotine and get their head chopped off that first game. <laughs> but no, nah, something changed. All of a sudden they're like, wait, we showed we can win. You know, but as far as overall all talent is concerned, as far as coaching is, uh, Vogel's done an, a, a magnificent job coaching the Lakers. Jason Kidd, you know, assistant's always going to be helpful as far as defensive schemes and adjustments. So Lakers 4-0. Um, here's the picture I wanted to show you, the, the fans. Look at how stressed. <laughs> <laughs> this is before the last shot. So it's something that I'm glad they're doing. You know, it's like virtual fans. Um also, you can hear the sounds, too, so you can hear fans cheering and this and that. You even have fans removed for, like, inappropriate language. <laughs> they get their monitor turned off. Westbrook actually <laughs> Westbrook actually knocked on a fan, and a, and a fan got ousted. And I, and I was like, geez, Russell, you know, you you know, you know, snowflake. What the hell did he ever do? You know, how, <laughs> how bad? What bad? I mean, how bad does someone have to be for you to, to tell him turn his turn that TV off, you know? So, yeah. And uh, Celtics play uh, Tuesday, I think. Celtics uh, play. They're down 1-2 against Miami Heat. Um, and since we're still in the NBA, who do you have for that, uh, for the series? Let's let's see. Let's see. make a bowl pick now. I mean, I like what Miami's been doing. I think they're a well, well-coached team. I think they actually had, they, they, you know, they've traded away like one or two pieces. They've gotten a couple pieces for this bubble. So, um, you know, it's great to – see the culmination of what that team is. Um, I just don't think the, 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 the Celtics are deep enough, you know, down low to be able to play the style of game they want to play as well as beat the teams that they're trying to beat, you know. So uh, I'm always perplexed at, at, at how underperforming uh, <clears throat> Boston usually is. Um, you know, in the Brad Stevens era, I expected a lot more from them. And uh, in all honesty, with all the talent they have there, with the system they got going, I on, I see that maybe Brad Stevens might be, you know, not staying there for too for much, much too longer. How many games um, do you think in this series? I think it's six again. I think the Heat, you know, win the next game, put the pressure on them, and um, you know, one of the next two after that, you know, seems like it's going down. I don't, I don't see the Celtics. I'm surprised they even took the last game, but you know, again, a, a pride game for sure. Um, I'd like to say that both teams are well coached. Uh, I mean, I think Haywood, you know, Haywood losing him is is important because he's got a great finesse shot on the outside and he, and he does crash the boards for a guy who gets injured a lot. And really, uh, as I said before, the East Coast is going to be won by the coaches. And um, I mean, every now and then you're going to have these games where the butler did it, <laughs> wink, wink. But 
Um, I picked the Celtics, and I, I think seven games. I think seven games. I think Brad. The, um, I, I think that you have one of that that first game could have went either way, right? I love that freaking block over the weekend. The rejected dunk. You know, Tatum tried to go in for a dunk, and mm-hmm. guy bent his hand, got bent back, but he but he stayed tough. You know, it's pretty cool, right? Yeah. So, all right. So that's it for the NBA. Let's move on to mixed martial arts. I mean, we had a great weekend last weekend. Uh, um, Shimeyev, man, that dude. Oof, that dude. I don't. I forgot where he's from, but. He won. He's like, he wants to fight right away. Two weeks later, Dan is like, come fight. Sure, right away. Another fighter pulls out right away. And he's like, I believe he fought like three times in a month and a half. <laughs> and, and he'll be on our quick question, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the main event, which um, was Tyron Woodley against um, the number two contender, Kobe Covington. Kobe Covington won fifth round. Uh, doc, Dr. Stoppage, or just call it TKO. Very, very intelligent move. Um, Tyron Woodley had a guillotine choke in, but felt like he was losing it. And Kobe did the right thing. When, you, when, you, when, you, when you're in danger of getting choked, you tuck your chin and you press the top of your head into their, into their side. And you, provide, and, you, you, and, you, and you do it until either they're, just, they're not comfortable, they let it go, or until you wiggle your head out. So he pressed the top, his forehead or the top of his head, which is the hardest part of the body, right into this guy's ribs that he popped his ribs. And I saw an x-ray, it looked gross. So the question is, um, Rob, your reaction to the fight was it a, what was it what you expected? Let's we'll do that first part, and what's next for both competitors? First first question is was <laughs> did it go down exactly as how you expected as far as the the pace of the fight and what it would look like? Pretty much, pretty <laughs> much exactly. <laughs> you know, and pretty much was exactly the way Kobe fights, and is exactly the way uh, you know Tyron Woodley has fought for the last you know five or six fights. Even into his title offenses, you know, if you take away three or four of his, you know, amazing one-handed, you know, one, you know, one-hit knockouts, you know, there's not a lot of impressive skill that he, you know, displays in a lot of his fights. So for me, I think it's just what Dana Dana White was talking about is I think that he has been not focused on fighting for a very long time, and it shows. And just his natural skill doesn't get him away with things anymore, and. uh you know, unfortunately, he couldn't, you know, shut Kobe Kobe coming in up because, you know, this guy is even talking about, you know, the guy he got his jaw broken against, you know, and he's still talking crap. So uh, it's unfortunate. Gonna, I think we're definitely uh, gonna visit it that. might be time. Yeah, but I think it's I think it might be time for a tyrant to, you know, start thinking about another career because not because he's not talented enough. It's never been about that. But. He shouldn't, just like a boxer, should never be in the sport of fighting if your head's not in it because your your body's taking the hits no matter what. And if your head's not in it, yeah. you're going to lose. So and we're definitely going to cover more, shots. more um, Tyron Woodley and shame or no shame. So I'm going to save all, uh, some of that for that. Um, this match went exactly how I thought. Two people that are wrestlers that hate each other. Very, very rarely do they have this unofficial agreement. They have this unofficial agreement where... Um, they punch each other in the face like Kamara Usman and, and everybody else did. So, um, hold on one second. <laughs> Wonder what's going on, right? Oh. <laughs> hey, Braxton. <laughs> All right, Braxton, I got, uh, daddy's got to work. Um, so, there's something to be said about, one, the way Tyron uh, doesn't do well against wrestlers. Right, I, we named a bunch. We named um, Rory McDonald. We named Kamaru Usman, Gilbert Burns. So it was one of those things where it went down exactly how we thought. That's why I laughed because I was like, I can't wait to to hear what Rob says about this. It was going to be a fight against the cage. It was going if there was a crowd there, they would boo a lot. Um, there, you know, occasionally they did break, and Tyron did tag him, but I, Tyron knew that Kobe felt his power, and once he felt his power. It wasn't going to do anything. Tyron knew he was in trouble because Tyron mm-hmm. sometimes believes in his right hand and believes that you hit hard and someone hard enough, they're going to back up and they're going to give him some space and let him do what he did, you know? At least the first round he came out swinging. I'm really, really disappointed he didn't throw more leg and body kicks. 
you know, he he, he felt like he was going to get taken down. And when, once you're, you're scared of throwing leg and body kicks and you don't know how to use your reach advantage, his reach was 74 inches. Um, mm -hmm. And Kobe was 72. So, yeah, it went down exactly how I expected. So for me, um, what's up next? I'll go first. I think Tyron Woodley. Like if Dana's smart, Dana didn't. I think there's a part that Dana didn't that didn't want him to be champion in the first place. And Dana was like, "Geez, this whole time I'm throwing this guy strikers and Muay Thai guys and submission specialists. All I had to do was feed him wrestlers." So, you know, I think Dana's probably gonna give him Santiago Ponzinibbio next. Um, you know, an overall all around savage. And and if Tyron doesn't survive that, that's that's four in a row. You know, and maybe maybe he does hang it up. Maybe he he doesn't kill. He doesn't destroy his legacy. His legacy is good, dude. I know people say, oh, he's not. Oh, now everyone's on the Tyrone sucks thing, but mm -hmm. it takes a lot to climb up, Rob. It takes a lot to 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 knock out Robbie Lawler. Um, you know, when when a lot of people tried, Carlos Condit tried. You know, um, Johnny Hendricks. You know, that's and Johnny Hendricks in his prime tried. Uh, so great great reign, almost three years, four title defenses. Um, one was actually fight of the night. The first one, it was Stephen Thompson, and and he moves on. Now Kobe Covington left himself a whole bunch of options. He'd want he wants to fight Masvidal. He doesn't have a problem with that. Masvidal supposed is in contracts to fight Diaz a second time. He wants to definitely fight the champ, but the champ is probably like screw you, get in line. So he's looking right. for that one match or that one fight that can get him back in. And now he's he's thinking Nate Diaz, uh, Nick Diaz, Nate's older brother. He, <clears throat> he wants to retire him permanently. But before you go, I want to show you a video because this is a testament of how this man, who's been quiet as a mouse four years ago, knows that 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 sometimes you know the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So this is what he said in an interview, and the UFC is no accident they had Kamara Usman with a headset on too. Ready? Here we go. All right, so you got a call from the president. You got to finish over Tyron Woodley. You said you had a great camp and you fought the way you wanted to. So now I've got to ask you, we have Kamaru Usman working here tonight. He is on the desk. Um, what would you like to say to him? Marty Fake Newsman, you got so lucky last time. You know what happened two days before? That was the, the biggest, worst fight of my life. That was my worst night and that was your best night. Wait till the next time I see you. There ain't going to be no cheap shots. You're not going to be able to call fake nut shots. You're not going to call fake this? eye pokes and get awesome. 10 minutes of timeout and get a fake stoppage. Mm -hmm. I'm coming for you again. You know who was winning that last fight. You're on borrowed time. This is my time. I'm getting my big Guess what? You're fake news. No one go. cares about you. No one cares about you. You the do? Worst, you're pathetic. Do you care about me? No, yeah, because you got the worst decision in the history of the sport. So no, many bad calls decision. against I, me. I, oh, I, yeah, I no. You. No, you didn't. I stood right up. That wasn't even close. To, your no, face. Marty Fake Newsman. You're, I you're broke. Full, you didn't break your my face. face. I got right up and protested Look it right away. That was a fake stoppage, fake rap. He said a fake stoppage. Wait till I see you next time. You're dead. You're dead. You got unfinished business. Really? I'm coming for you. You said that last time. What happened? Yeah, you wait till this time. You yeah, know who was winning face. fake stoppage. You didn't break I none. Broke the only thing you broke face. is your own will. You broke your spirit. That's why you're running for I me. Did? That's why you hiding. You ain't nowhere to run, nowhere to hide now. Wait till I see you next time. You didn't finish Tyron Woodley like I did. You're dead. You're on borrowed time. Who's hey, who, I'm not worried about Tyron shine. Woodley. You worried about me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at you. No one to look at your hairline. That shit's gone, bro. You're the ugliest dude in the history of the UFC. That hairline's halfway up your face. Stop doing steroids. Stop. You didn't break nothing. The your only face. thing you broke is your will. You <laughs> broke your will. You ain't Ow, I he said you broke your will. will. <laughs> You're the champ in the history of this, this company, but I man. broke your face. You didn't break anything. That's you broke the important your own will. Thing. You broke your own will. Why are you running? Why are you running? Come see me in the octagon then. See me. I'm see what happens next time. Your best night, that was my worst night, and I what still beat your time? ass. Okay, I tell still me, tell me right now. Tell me what happens next I'm time. I'm knocking your ass out. You're going out cold. I are guarantee you? it. Just like I wobbled you. I know you hmm. lost all those brain cells. I know you're, you're dimensional right now and delusional. He Wait just said dimensional. Keep it up. I don't what the hell does that mean? This is raw American steel. I got the president of the United States. Dragon energy. When I see you, when I see you, you're dead. You're dead. I ain't playing. I was playing before. And guess what I was playing for? I ain't playing before. I ain't playing anymore. I'm serious now. I'm serious now. I'm serious. Now. I'm serious. Wait till I see you next time. Wait till I see you next time. You're he said you got Game of Thrones, got dragon energy, huh? <laughs> Is this, I, I guess I got to skip your, the question and go back, but is this the best thing that happened to Usman? 
Um, yeah, I mean, this is, you know, Usman's not really selling uh, a lot of pay-per-views on his own, whether it's fights or outside the UFC. So it is great for him. Um, and it's, it's really nice to see, you know, a, a good person respond, you know, in a nice way. You know, he's not, you know, trying to put anybody down. He's just trying to, you know, respond to him with factual information. And, you know, people are going to act the way they're going to act sometimes. And, you know, everybody's been clowning on Kobe Covington for a long time. And so... <clears throat> you know, this is nothing new, and I, I do think it's great for him, and I'm glad they're <laughs> getting out all their anger and tension. Yeah, they, they cut out the part where he insulted his heritage. They X'd out that yeah. part. He was like, oh, I got a country behind me. He says, what tribe do you have with, like, puffing smoke and all that stuff? In? And everyone's like, oh, it was racial in this scenario. It wasn't racial. It was just a stupid thing to say. It was trying to, you know, r- do this whole kind of um, nationalist thing that he's been – he's been um, – you know, right? He's been riding that train for a while. So, so who's um who do you think is up next for Covington? I mean, I think you know why not Masvidal yeah. and <clears throat> find out who's the best comp- competitor to uh, fight after Burns and uh, and Usman. You know, Ooh, how about that? So, how about you he know, waits? How about tournament? he waits right till Burns mm-hmm. Usman? Because if Burns yeah. wins that, he doesn't stand on line anymore. Mm-mm. Well, Burns should be in already. You yeah. know, Burns should well, be. Well, no, th- that know, match is happening. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it should have already been, you know, happened. So that's that has yeah. to go down. He pulled and down. And then, but... you know, you have Masvidal who came in on short notice. And you have uh, Kobe Covington who's waiting after a, a good victory against, you know, uh, someone heading outside the top five now. Um, I think they're both in line to to possibly maybe make that a super fight because that's a big fight too. You know, there's a lot of animosity there. And then, uh, you know, the winner of that can fight the winner of uh, Burns and uh, and, uh, and Uzma. Yeah, I would love to see Masvidal against Covington, even though I think Covington's favorite. I, in my mind, Covington's is favorite to win that. I don't think um, Masvidal has anything hard enough to hit him with, and I don't think Covington has any problem taking him down. I, I think there'll be a lot of complaining that, oh, you use your wrestling to beat me by Masvidal, but but there is that that knee, and there there are these 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 slips that I, like like think about it. I didn't think he's gonna knock out um, this dude in five seconds, right? Uh, um, the wrestler, the elite wrestler. I didn't think he's gonna knock out Ben Askren. Yeah. yeah, Ben Askren. I didn't think he's gonna knock out Darren Till. You know, Darren Till has a you know a strong a strong chin, and he big he got dude. he got sl- yeah bigger dude right. You know, dude moved up to one eighty five. <laughs> so so very very interesting. But um, we got a little bit more to cover, and that was that was fun. And we're gonna talk about UFC this week later on in this show. But let's move on to one of my favorite topics. It's called shame or no shame. 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 All right, Rob, this is, let's call it shame or no shame. Stop the clock. There you are. There I am. Rob, shame or no shame. LeBron James did not get the MVP. The voting is G, uh, Greek Freak, 962. LeBron James is 753. And third wasn't even close. Like James Harden, 367. Glad Luca got in there too. But um, shame or no sh- to shame or not to shame? LeBron James does not win MVP. Yeah, uh, I think it's uh, no shame. And the my thing about that is if you – you know, the biggest thing that people talk about and it makes sense to an extent is if you take somebody away from their team, how good is that team? You know, within reason, you know, still got to reach the playoffs, still got to do great. But Giannis had his team and, and again for the second season in a row in the best position in NBA basketball for the season. And they didn't come through because the team basketball game, especially in the playoffs. So for me, Giannis has to be MVP. I'm going to go with no shame on this too because LeBron James – 
Um, he did have an MVP t- uh, type caliber season, but he wasn't exactly the out the, the outlier on that team. I mean, on any day between him and Davis, they were one and one A. And if you're going to get crewed up like that, you can't expect an MVP unless you stick out significantly, mm-hmm. especially in, in in these game these game closing situations. So he wants Finals MVP. He's still going to have to compete with that with the way Davis is playing. But make mine Greek free. Right. Um, like, just like just like James Harden, though, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. Right. We're not even talking about postseason. No more. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, thank you know, it's regular season MVP, so I'm glad he got his votes too. So, mm-hmm. um, shame or no shame, Rob, Tyron Woodley officially loses 15 consecutive rounds. I'll go first on this one. Ready? Um, mm-hmm. I say no shame. Because if you consider the three people he lost against, he lost to Gilbert Burns, who's the number one contender. He lost to Kamar Usman, who's the current champion. And he lost to um, Kobe Covington, who was, who was the former interim champion and the number two contender. So it just shows that his time might be, um, um, as far as beating top three is done, but I think he's still a top 10 fighter. And there's no shame in losing to those, those people um, 15 straight rounds. Go, Rob. Shame or no shame? Yeah. I mean, it's really difficult. I'd have to say, for me, say it. <laughs> it, it is a shame. It's shame because as a high-level competitor, and it's not, it's not just been for these last three fights, he has not fought a different style. And I know that his coaches and his training staff has been trying to get him to fight more. And I think that would have changed a lot of these results, which would have made it a lot easier for him to be the fighter we all see him to be. Be. Um, yeah, so for me, it is shame just because he is unwilling to, to change uh, like that. Um, but in the other essence, just to disclaim, uh, I don't have any shame against him because, you know, he, he's in that position. He's put himself in that position, and it's hard to just walk away, you know. So these are the fights that he would have to fight. You know, these, these make a lot of sense, and, you know, maybe he is past his time, yeah. you know. And you know what the crazy thing is? Like, I know the sport's been around for a long time, but it's continuing to evolve, right? Before, there was just one guy that brought one, that brought one strength, and then all of a sudden, they're like, you can't just bring one strength. You have to have two. And you got to have wrestling and jiu-jitsu, or you, or you have to have wrestling and boxing or kickboxing. You have to have kickboxing and jiu-jitsu. And Tyron Woodley was not... I mean, he got his black belt by submitting Darren Till, but... He's always been two-dimensional. He's, just, he, he's always been like a, a constant pressure wrestler. And the guy with a, with a big right hand. And now, because the sports evolved, particularly on heavier people that know how to cut weight to 170. I mean, when right. was the last time he looked the same size as the as the other fighter? Yeah, it's been a while. Lawler yeah. came in bigger. Lawler fought at 185. Till fight is fighting at 185. Um, Stephen Thompson, a very long 170. Burns looked huge. Uh, um, Covington looked way huge. You know, Kamar yeah. Usman looked huge. So. Um, and he ain't cutting down. It's all it's all shredded. So he he might be in a kind of a Matt Hughes situation. Maybe he just gets out before before something before he gets finished in a manner you know that might really taint his legacy. Like he's only been finished twice, a uh, um, hundred years ago against Nate Marquardt, and this was just a nasty, nasty. Oh God, maybe I'll put it up. Uh, uh, the rib injury. So. Um, okay, that's the shame and no shame. And now we move on to our next one. Quick question, Rob. Quick question. Are the Seahawks the best team in the NFC? Yes or no? Uh, yeah, probably for the time being, yeah. Absolutely. I go with yes. I go with yes. With the Saints, pending what the Saints uh, do tonight. Um, quick question, Rob. I'm asking one more time. I've asked this already. Does Adesanya beat Costa? I'll go first. I say yes. Um, I want to say no. Uh, yeah, I want to say no. Quick question, Rob. Do the Eagles come back and win the NFC East division? No. I got to go no. Uh, can the Bills beat the Patriots twice in order to win that division? I, I think we both agree you have to beat that team twice. Uh, no. I say no. yes. Um, should Cowboy Donald Cerrone retire? Yes, I've been talking about this for a while. Yes, and I'll finish by saying he had a uh, draw this weekend, uh, mm-hmm. but only because the, the ref took a point for an eye poke. That was a loss. So, um, does Kazmet 
This you might not know this is Kazmet Shimonov have a number next to his name this week. <laughs> You're like, I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> uh no. no. In either division. I mean, eh, fifteen. No, not this week. I say yes. All right, cool. And that's that concludes our quick question. Rolling along, Rob. We're gonna finish up by sports movie of the week. My sports movie of the week, Rob, is Pride of the Yankees. This is a movie made in the 19, I believe in the 1940s, basically reflecting on the career from the beginning all the way to the end of one Lou Gehrig, portrayed by Gary Cooper. Gary Cooper was Lou Gehrig, one of the best performances I've ever seen from him, and Gary Cooper's had a lot of them. Babe Ruth was in a movie playing himself. Babe Ruth was, in fact, Babe Ruth. You will not find a black and white movie that is a sports movie, that shows uh, 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 oppor- chaos meets opportunity and a romantic comedy and that and a tearjerker at the end that, that uh, as well as pride of the Yankees. Lou Gehrig got his shot when a, pl- a batter was injured and when he went up to bat, all of the bats, Rob, were lined up on the floor. That's how you picked up your bat. He picked up his bat, walked on those bats, slipped, feet first, flew in the air, busted his behind. And a woman in the crowd said, oh my, look at Tanglefoot. He got so pissed. He looked at that woman. Boom, line drive. His first hit was a line drive base hit. Later on that that week, sends her, finds out who she is, sends her flowers. Sincerely yours, Tanglefoot. Proposes to marry her. They're married. The, the, The great love affair. Uh, uh, the parents are awesome. I wish Lou would stop messing around and, and win the game, you know? Um, immigrant parents, a uh, hardworking family, didn't, didn't want to live in an expensive place. Commuted from Brooklyn to the Bronx via police escort. I know because the house he lived in was the house I grew up in. <laughs> so, very, very good movie, uh, romantic comedy speaking, uh, very... Uh, being diagnosed with a disease and knowing that he didn't have long to go and then his speech talking about being the luckiest man in the world just made me cry. And this movie will make you cry. It'll make you laugh. It'll make you cheer for him. He promised a kid uh, um, who who was um, didn't have long to go. He promised a dying kid he was going to hit two home runs in one game. Does he do it? Find out. Watch the movie. Pride of the Yankees, a possible four McKibben beards. I give it an emphatic four. Yeah, my movie of the week, my sports movie of the week um, is going to be another baseball movie. Um, Tom Hanks, Gene Davis, one of my favorites, uh, A League of Their Own. Um, <laughs> um, when I was younger, I you know stumbled upon it, but um, just a great movie. I was always uh, always loved history and war, so it was kind of an easy you know mix between baseball and war for me. Um, but it's about a you know, female professional league that started up, uh, or like, uh, yeah, during while, World War II. Yeah. during the World War II, during the draft period when, uh, they had a lot of men going overseas and, uh, it was the only women back home. So, um, not only did they work in factories, but they also, um, did other things to entertain the, <clears throat> the population at home. So just a great story. And, uh, you know, shows like the other side of, you know, the military life again, and not just the military aspect, but in the World War II area where, you know, women were seen as, I'll say, too valuable to, to have them go to war because, you know, they're able to birth children and, and men aren't necessarily able to birth children. That's sort of the way I think the military thinks about it. But, um, yeah, women are super important, especially at that time. And it just showed in a whole different facet, like how important they can be. So, um, yeah, amazing movie. Great really cast, huh? Emotional too, and so yeah, a great movie. Great Madonna, movie. Rosie O'Donnell, Gina Madonna Davis, Mo- Tom yeah. Hanks. Uh, um, wow, what's your come on? What's your favorite line in it? Oh yeah, you know, there's no crying in baseball. <laughs> you know, Are you crying? <laughs> there's no crying in baseball. I say it all the time when I see girls crying <laughs> volleyball. Like, there's no crying in volleyball. <laughs> Get out of here. Um. Oh, great. So how many, um, how many McKibben beards? Uh, I mean, this is nostalgic for me. So I, you know, three and a half McKibben beards, I'll give it. All right, cool. I yeah. like that. 
Um, all right, so that's all we got. I got a, a quick shout out at the end. I want to give a shout out to my boy Evan Corey, who's finding the way to play these smaller tournaments. Of course, the FIVB and AVP were kind of shut down, but they they these some of these people who are on the lower end of the draw or, or higher end of the the qualifier have continued to improve. And every time I see a tournament, every time there's a live stream, it's him. He's in the finals winning. He's in the finals losing. I think a couple of weeks ago was the first time he got to play full time defense because he's either been solo blocking or or splitting the difference. Uh, big up to Evan Corey. Also, a big shout out to Fallon Fuenu and Moana who came on my show last week. And I know a lot of players don't want to speak about politics because once you you implement your politics, some people feel like they lose fans. And I get that, you know, right? Like as Jordan, Michael Jordan said, Republicans wear sneakers too. But um, sometimes, you you know, you have to make a stand for what you feel is humanitarian. And if that sides with the left or the right so be it she just she was totally honest and forthcoming in the, in the podcast you have to listen to it it's awesome rob and she let the chips fall where they may she was unapologetic um and she was deeply on, on her integrity is off the page deeply a, a, a high a deeply honorable woman and i and i and i can't say enough kudos fallon for moana Go ahead, Rob. Go ahead, do your Russell Simmons thing. <laughs> you know, stay happy, stay safe. <laughs> God bless you. Good night. <laughs> All right, cool, man. Well, like I said last week, I said it again this week. Rob McLean might love you guys, but I had enough of you. All right, so for all of you at home, for all of you on your iPad at Starbucks, for all of you on the lunch line on your droid uh, watching this, for all of you on your desktop who runs the world, old school, old school for rob keep it mclean mclean this is episode 35 of sports debate tuesday i'm jason debeas and we both say we're out come check out the option podcast on optiondb.com it's also available on itunes and spotify and on youtube under the ny varsity sports handle you're gonna love what you hear